Well, praise the Lord and welcome to our Friday night Biblical Foundations class. And tonight we're going to take a look at Luke chapter 12 in your Bible. So I pray that you have your Bible with you right now. And if you don't, um, go get it. And we're going to be praying. Uh, and let's go to the Lord together. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. Thank you for our Savior. Thank you so much for sending Jesus to die for us, not only to die for us, but to, to rise again in his promise, Lord, to come back again. And we're looking forward to that day. Lord, we do thank you. We thank you for the blood of Christ, which cleanses away our sins, Lord, all of our sins. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you've done for us and how you have blessed us so much, Lord. We do thank you. God, we just ask that you bless your word tonight, bless this study tonight, and bless those that are listening in. And we just give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, tonight, Luke chapter 12, we're going to take a look at, uh, we'll start reading verse uh, verse 1 together, and we'll see what the Lord has for us. Amen? Because God's got some great stuff in his word for you and I. Let's read. Luke chapter 12, starting at verse 1. In the meantime, when there were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people, insomuch as they trod upon one another, he began to say to his, unto his disciples, first of all, Beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in light. And that which ye have spoken in ear in the closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. But I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body and after have no more that they can do. But I forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. You know, um, tonight, you know, looking at this, just this first part of the scripture, it's amazing when the Lord was ministering how many people were gathered. You know, it says here, that they, were, they were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people. I mean, so many people, it says here, uh, in so much that they trod upon one another. I mean, there are so many people there. They were they were trampling over each other you know, to hear the Lord and to be, you know, to be there with Jesus. And isn't that an amazing thing to think about those huge crowds? And yet these huge crowds that they came together, you know, you, you have to wonder uh, where they were um, when, you know, Pilate was asking the question, you know, Shall I release unto you, you know, the king of the Jews? You know, I mean, Barabbas or the king of the Jews, you know, and they they said, crucify him. So isn't it interesting how quickly crowds uh, can turn like that? Amen. You know, you have to be seeking the Lord for the right reason. You know, and seeking the Lord is not just because you want to get a benefit from being with the Lord. It's because God is God. You love him because of who he is regardless of what he's done he blesses each one of us but um you know speaking of a blessing of the lord it was it was an amazing thing um i shared with some people today um and shared with my wife you know how earlier today i had to go um I was doing a, a work thing and i had to take a car to go get a you know oil change and stuff like that it was going to take a while so i had to walk back over to my office which is um uh, it's a considerable distance. It's probably, you know, maybe a couple miles away or from where I was at. Um, so I decided to go for a walk since it was a nice, you know, it, it had been nice or okay. It wasn't raining. Uh, well, I started to step out of the building. And as I stepped out of the building, it started to rain. And then it steadily increased in its uh, intensity. And as I was walking on the, beside the road there, um, you know, a, a car pulled up, or actually it was a truck, and it pulled up, and a gentleman in there, and uh, he says, hey, can, can I give you a ride? And normally, I never say, okay, but this time, it's in my heart, okay, you know, yeah, that would be great, because it was close, and we were on the base, and it was not that far away. Okay, you know, 
couple miles. So anyway, I, he said, I don't know where I'm going, so you have to give me directions. So I gave him directions, you know, and, and I said, okay, down here at this light, and we turn right, and it'll be straight down the road, and you can see that big building down there. And we saw the big building, he saw the big building, and, and I just told him, thank you so much as we're driving down there. And he was like, oh yeah, not a problem, you know. And, and as we got over there, I said, yeah, right over there is a crosswalk, and that's where the entrance of the building is. So, and he, then he saw the, uh, I noticed that in his truck he had a, he had a map on, and he wasn't familiar, he said he wasn't familiar with the area. And then um, as he was dropping me at the crosswalk right directly across from there is the post office. And he says, hey, that's the post office that I was trying to get to. And then I said, well, that's great. He says, yeah, God told me to stop and, and give you a ride. <laughs> and I was like, well, praise the Lord. I'm glad he did because, you know, it was a blessing for me to get uh, to be uh, brought out of that rain. It was coming down pretty hard and it was just a, such a blessing. And um and then this man was also blessed because the post office that he was looking for was right there where, where uh, you know, through his obedience to the Lord picking me up and taking me there, he was able to find a post office easily. Um, and then for, um, and for him doing that, it was a blessing to me because uh, it got me out of the rain. And I was like, well, I'm very thankful to the Lord for that. And, you know, God blesses you in unexpected ways at times, you know, and, and, um, it was just it just amazing experience with the Lord today, and I just wanted to share that with you. You know, say that God blesses us, you know, each and every day, so many ways. So seek the Lord because He's worthy. You know, not because of oh, you know, I want this or I want that. No, just seek the Lord because He's worthy. He's God, and He is awesome, and He takes care of us. And even in times when you're not even, you know, you're not even aware God is already doing something to to prepare. You know somebody to to be at a certain place at a certain time now you might think that that's that's not a big deal but it is a big deal because you imagine that um in order for the lord to make some of these things happen i want you to think about hip planning i mean in order to plan to have something happen like that you have to know exactly where two people are going to be at at the exact time and not only that each person grows up through life, right, in different places, different parents, different experience, different things. And those parents came together, you know, I mean, different ways, different experiences, all these things. God brings all of these things together to intersect and to bring two people together at a particular moment in time. That's incredible. And it's like the Lord already knows. That's like uh, my wife and I, I mean, when we met each other, it was you know, it was God's plan to, to bring us together. And yet we, we hadn't been aware of that. We didn't know until the day that we, we knew, you know, and we, when we met each other and, uh, and even after we met each other, it was a little bit of time before I was able to convince my wife that I was, uh, I was okay. <laughs> I, she's behind me over there. She can't, you can't see her, but she's over there. And, uh, uh it was, it was great. You know, God, brings people from different places. I was from, I was from Texas and, and my wife was from Idaho and, um, and we met in, in, in a mountain, literally, literally in a mountain. So very cool. What God does. Amen. And, uh, anyway, it says, beware ye the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy for there's nothing covered that shall not be revealed. Neither hid that shall not be known. You know, and this is one of the important things is these these Pharisees and Sadducees, they were plotting and planning and, and stuff. They didn't like what Jesus was doing. They didn't like that he wasn't, you know, doing the things that their traditions. He was doing the word and the will of God, but he wasn't doing their traditions. And that made them mad because they they esteemed their traditions higher than they did the word of God. They they left off righteous judgment for tradition and traditionalism. Um, and that's religion. It's not a good thing. Um, that's not a good thing. That's not pure religion and undefiled, as the scripture talks about. That's not what that is. That's religion. You know, this is uh, when people become re religious, they, li they leave off the reason, you know, they leave off the reason that, that Jesus came. To save us from our sins, the love of God that 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 drove him to to go to very very uh, extreme measures to save mankind from his sin. 
I mean, sending Jesus to die on the cross for us. Jesus willingly going to that cross, sacrificing himself for us in obedience to the Father. I mean, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. And, you know, we think about that. Uh, they, the Pharisees, they didn't like that. They did. They, they didn't like the. They didn't like that he didn't do what they wanted him to do. And yet, God was trying to get them to see they needed to do what he wanted them to do. You know, think of King Solomon, and um, after he became king, you know, the Lord um, appeared to him, you know, in his dream, and asked him, you know, what would you, you know, what, what did he want him to do for him? But, you know, and Solomon asked for wisdom. He asked for wisdom to judge the people rightly. And it was a wonderful request of, that he had to the Lord because he didn't ask for money, power, you know, victory over his enemies. He didn't ask for any of that. He asked for wisdom. You know, he was seeking the Lord the right way, looking unto him. Now, I don't say that his life was always perfect, neither is yours. But the intent of our hearts is to do what? To seek the face of the Lord, to look to him. You know, it shouldn't be that it's about about religion because religion in itself is dead. When there's when there's no love for the Lord, there's no love for your neighbor, there's no then you you got nothing. You got an outward form just like the lord says you you make the sepulchers beautiful on the outside the graves beautiful on the outside you make them paint them decorate them but the inside is still full of dead men's bones and uh the lord doesn't want that for us you know he wants us to be from the heart serving him loving him loving our neighbor that's what we're supposed to do it says, therefore, there's nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. I mean, there's no secret before God. There's no secrets. There's no hidden sins. There's no, you know, God, everything that happens in, in your life, everything that you do, every thought, every imagination, every act, every everything that you say or do, God is aware of it. God knows. This is why it's so important for you and I, if we sin against the Lord, to repent. If you sin against your neighbor, repent. Ask forgiveness, man. Don't do it again. You know, remember that there's there's nothing hidden. Even if nobody else is there, the Lord is there. You know, and, and you have to understand, it says, Therefore, whatsoever you have spoken in darkness shall be heard in light. And that which you have spoken in the ear and closet shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. Now, there's some folks that that are that might be feeling nervous about that. But let me tell you, you shouldn't be talking anything in here. If you're not willing to broadcast out here. You know what I'm saying? We need to make sure that in our lives that we are doing what's good, right, pleasing in, in the Lord's sight at all times. When we're with a lot of people, when we're only with by ourselves. You know, your opinion, um, with the things that you say, you need to make sure that it lines up with the word of God. That means if you're out there bad mouthing and tearing people down, you got to look to the scripture. Is that what you're supposed to do? Is that the way I'm supposed to live my life? Is that the way I'm supposed to conduct myself? Is that what I'm supposed to be saying? You know, it's better that um, it's better that you think about it on the the other side. There's nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. You know, this is why the Lord says, you know, do, about you know praying in you know praying in secret. What praying to the Lord between you and Him? It's not for show. It's not for to gather attention to yourself, but it's pray between you and god and what's cool about that is here that that would be known you're not broadcasting it that's why sometimes people you know back in the day they used to make a lot of commotion in the temple in jerusalem you know throwing in the money into the into the offering the way they would make sure that they made enough noise to get everybody's attention sounding a trumpet before them as they get gave that is not what we're supposed to do. Giving is not like that. Giving, give, not let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. You know, do it in secret. Give, give to the Lord. If you're going to give to the Lord, give to the Lord with everything. Give to the Lord. But don't go out there and 
broadcast. Look how good I am because I gave this to the Lord. I did that, you know. It's not what we're supposed to do. That's what the Pharisees were trying to do. But that's hypocrisy. That's not what you're supposed to do. You are supposed to work for the Lord. You're just not supposed to go out there and tell everybody, look at me, look at me, look what I'm doing. No. You should be out there saying, look at Jesus. Look at Jesus. Look at Jesus. Look what he did. Amen? So this is what I tell you. God is good. Yeah, I told you that illustration earlier about, you know, getting a ride. You know, that gentleman that gave me a ride, I thank God for him. I mean, I thank God for him. I just pray the Lord blesses him because he was obedient to the Lord and he did something that was that was amazing. Then, you know, and that what's what's really funny too is is, you know, he didn't know, he didn't realize, I'm sure at the time that he's picking up another brother in Christ. He didn't realize that. But God did. That was amazing. And it was it was wonderful and it was a blessing to me. It was a real blessing. And it was a it was a real treasure to me. And I thank God that God blessed me that way through that brother. And I asked the Lord to bless that brother. Bless him. Because God God was amazing. I mean, all, that's all I can say. You know what? I, I, and I'm tell you, I'm going to tell you this, that um, not too much longer after that, a few minutes after that, I had an opportunity to share that exact thing with, with um, a gentleman who's an atheist. And you know what? I think that he, the Lord is getting through to him. Because just a few minutes after that, he, you know, right when I told him that, actually, is he was saying, well, that's incredible how God works. You keep testifying about what God has done, what God does. The world takes notice. It says, um, and I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But I forewarn you, whom you shall fear, fear him, which after he hath killed, hath the power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. You know, fear the Lord. Fear God. Don't fear these, you know, don't for, in this case here, when we're looking at the scripture, don't fear these, these religious men that were hypocrites, that were not following the Lord. They just were in these positions of, of uh, authority you know, that thought that they could do and, and say and, and get away with whatever they're doing, but they, they weren't. God saw it. And whatever you sow is what you're going to reap. I mean, this was a dangerous thing for them. But, you know, fear the Lord. Do be a witness for Christ, even when it's difficult, even when you have to pay a price for it. Be a witness for Christ. It says here, um, fear him, which after he hath killed has the power to cast into hell. It would do good for, for everyone to think about that. You know, God is not willing that any perish, but all come to repentance. God loves you. God wants you to come to, to faith in Christ. God wants you to have eternal life. God wants you to, to, to do these things with what he says in his word. But, If you don't fear the Lord, it's foolish. It's the most foolish thing that you could do to not fear God. So the fear of the Lord constrains us, right? The fear of the Lord contains that that unruly, rebellious old nature that is still fighting with you, contending with you in your own body. That old nature... The fear of the Lord will put that thing down. Fear God. Remember what he says. At every act, every work, you will give an account for. So make your works good, not evil. It says here, Are not five sparrows sold for two farlings, and not one of them is forgotten before God? And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. You know, isn't that amazing that God has has such love for you that, you know, even 
the very hairs of your head are numbered that you know God knows you completely inside and out and you have you you have value to the Lord so people don't realize that they have a value and people some people think that they're they're not valuable to anyone you are to God you are to God and you are to us as Christians each person each person on this earth has value you may not be walking where God wants you to walk living the way that the Lord would have you live but you have value before the Lord I mean his son Jesus Christ went to the cross and gave his life for us it's for us all. You have value to God. God loves you. But you must reject your sin and turn to Christ. You can't keep your sin and have Jesus too. It doesn't work that way. You have to choose. The scripture says, choose you this day whom you will serve. You going to serve the Lord? You going to serve your flesh, which ends in absolute destruction. Choose, but choose wisely. It says, Also I say unto you, Whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. But he that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. You know, if you confess him before men, confess the Lord Jesus Christ, let people know about him, let, let people know about the love of Christ. You know, that the Lord, it says right here, Whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. So as you confess the Lord before men, the Lord will confess you before the angels of God. That's a big deal. But if you deny him before men, you'll be denied before the angels of God as well. Don't deny the Lord. I know that life is tough sometimes and there's difficult situations and circumstances and you're put in those situations and circumstances at times. But be bold for Jesus. Bold. Boldness doesn't mean brashness, right? Boldness doesn't mean rude. You can be bold, but do it. Be bold in love for the Lord. Love your fellow man that you see out there. Love them. They're lost. They need Jesus. Just like you did. Love them. Tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ. Be a witness for the Lord. Be bold about your faith. Amen. Remember that um, if, you, if somebody didn't come and talk to you, you wouldn't know Jesus today. So be bold in your faith. Amen. And whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But unto him that blasphemeth against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven. The, the Pharisees were ascribing the works of the Holy Spirit to the devil. That's what they were doing. The Holy Spirit was working through the Lord here in this ministry. I mean, doing fantastic things. And they were, and they were ascribing that to Satan, to Beelzebub. It's a dangerous thing. For those men to do. Don't do that. Remember that God does things. In, in works. In very powerful ways. People say mysterious ways. In powerful ways. God works in powerful ways. As evidenced throughout the scripture. He says what he says. And he does what he says. So I don't think that in that in itself can be classified as mysterious. I think he plainly puts it out there what he expects and 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 what he what he thinks about things. He put it right out here in his word for us. We have it. We know. We, we, it's not his will for us is not a mystery that we don't understand. We know what his will is because we have his word. We can see what his will is. He wants us to come to Jesus. He wants us to trust in him. He wants us to walk with him. He wants us to put sin away in our lives and refuse it and reject it and walk with Jesus to be holy because he's holy. Let me 
But some people say mystery because they don't read his word. So they don't know. And it would be unknown to you if you didn't read his word because you wouldn't know what he had to say. And that goes back to personal responsibility on Bible. Um, and just straight, just plain, plainly straight out, God has provided his word to us. And it is our responsibility to read it. It's our responsibility to obey it. It is our responsibility to find out what the Lord says to us in his word. Read it. Take it in context. Amen. Not out of context. Don't just randomly go and pick something. Don't do that. Read through it. Do you want someone... Take in a conversation that you're having, putting it in on text, put it all down on a text, and then have somebody else randomly go through and close their eyes and point to one one line in your entire conversation and say, this was all about, oh, this is, this is, you all, oh yeah, I know, I know what you have to say because I read that one line. Or the opposite, I read that one line, I don't know what you're talking about. I have no idea what you said there. It's a mystery to me. Well, it's because you got to read the whole thing. And the person that would pick this out and say, oh, this is what it's all about. Maybe when they read the whole thing, they find out that's not what it was all about at all. Because the line they picked was just one line. You got to take the whole word of God. You got to read it. You got to get into it and read it. Genesis to Revelation. Read the word of God. Find out what the Lord says to you. Amen. Not what somebody else said the, the word said, but find out what the word says to you. Personal responsibility. Not pushing that off on somebody else was the pastor's I pastor's responsibility to to read the word of God for me. No. Pastor has a responsibility to word, read the word of God and to preach the word of God and to stand for the word of God and to live the word of God. The pastor's got a responsibility to do that. But guess what? You have a responsibility to read the Word of God, to act on the Word of God, to obey the Word of God, to communicate the Word of God to, to other people. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. You need to do that. I need to do that. We all do as Christians. Rightly divide the Word of Truth. Be a... Get into the word and study this word and see what the Lord has to say. He's got a lot to hear of great things to tell us about living in this world. We we save ourselves a lot of pain, a lot of sorrow, a lot of heartache if we just get into his word and read it and obey it. Not just be a hearer of the word, but a doer also. And there would be a lot less television shows that completely get things wrong. You know, there should be some accountability in, in Christian programming. There really should. Get the message right. You know, because if we're not getting it right there, then we're not getting it right at all. Okay. Not about religion. It's about a relationship with Jesus Christ. A relationship that God wants to have with you. The question is, are you willing are you willing to have a relationship with God? And if you are, then turn to Jesus Christ. Repent of your sins. Trust him as your savior. Walk with him all the days of your life. And as he says in his word, do it. Obey it. Read it. Get it context, okay? Don't take something out of context and run with it. Context, it means... God says it here, he's going to say it here. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. God backs up his word with his word. All right, well, that's all I got for you tonight. God bless you guys. I love you. I pray that you have a wonderful night in Jesus. Get in the word. Stop wasting time. Time's running out. It really is. God bless you. Love you. Praise, praise God for you. And pray for one another. God bless. Good night.